Today we are going to the beach. Yes, this is the only time I've been able to wear this outfit since living in England. And today it's pouring rain and it actually feels like January, but it's mid-May, so we're just pretending. We're pretending today. I'm just imagining myself in Florida right now with a pina colada in hand and a wonderful fantasy book in the other. And that's like literally the vibe I'm going to share with you today and hopefully give you some inspirations uh, for books to take to the beach this summer. Okay, I've got my beachy pants on now because there's no real reason for me to continue to wear that skirt. Um, I do have a nice coffee and I want to thank Hannah Blackwell for inviting me to participate in this. She asked me if I would share some beach recommendations and I think she's invited a bunch of booktubers to share there. So I'm going to link everyone's booktube account in my description so you can check out more beach reads. My beach recommendations are fancy and fancy romance because that's what I read. Like if you're looking for a best friends to lovers, rom-com beach book. I don't have that for you. Oh, excuse me. Do you need some attention? What's up? Do you want to sit in my lap? No? Okay. I don't know what you want from me. When I go to the beach, I have a very specific kind. Rainy rock, come here. I have her ice cream. Come here. I'm not going to chase you around the house right now. Come here. When I think of the beach, don't bark at me. Do you want to come sit with me? When I think of the beach, I think of a very specific time. I'm just going to ignore you. I'm just going to ignore you. Rainier rat. When I think of a beach read, I want something that's fantasy romance. And I want something that is slow burn and that has a lot of world building and something that, that I can just like be totally mesmerized and like encapsulated by. Does that make sense? Like, like if I've got six hours at a beach, I want something that I can just like take my time with and enjoy thoroughly like slow burn romance, okay? Enemies to lovers, will they, won't they? Uh, is he says who he says he is? There's like dark beings at play. Like I want that for a beach read. I don't want something like really easy um, or cheesy. I don't know, that's just like me specifically. So if that sounds interesting to you, then I have eight recommendations to share with you today. I have books for like a day at the beach. If you are at a resort and you're here all week, girl, I got you. I have series for you that you need to just buy all three on your Kindle and just read and just binge them. So that's what I'm sharing with you today. Um, I actually really like this beach idea and I've been toying with the idea of doing an airplane fantasy romance recommendation video because fantasy romance for the airplane different kind of book for me i need something really fast paced and very steamy and like just very engaging because otherwise i'm in a bad mood i don't like sitting on long airplane rides flying from london to chicago multiple times a year and being jet lagged and hangry and i need a different kind of book for that so if you are just an airplane fantasy romance books there's a video coming for that as well but let's talk about the beach today Okay, this first one is fantastic. And I have to finish the third book. So actually, if I find myself on a beach, fingers crossed this summer, I will bring the third book and it will be my beach trade. But I'm gonna recommend to you the first one today. It's one that you probably have heard of. And that would be Daughter of No Worlds. This is about a girl named Tassana. She is a slave. She ends up killing her master in like self-defense and she goes on the run and she's she's seeking help and safety from people called the order and she wants to just like go and help as many other slaves as she can but they say that they will do that but it comes at the cost of her helping them in some way so they send her to be an apprentice of this guy named Max Antarius and their relationship is so slow burn. I love these two because they 
don't like each other. Max and Terrace really resent having to train Tisana. They also don't speak the same language, which is the first time I've ever come across that in a book ever. So it was cool to see them having to communicate in different ways, to see the level of miscommunication. It's a very sink your teeth kind of fantasy. There's a lot going on, but at the same time, it takes its time. So that's what I'm saying. Like if you have a few days to just like hang out on a beach with your pina colada or drink of choice in hand, <laughs> that's my choice, pina coladas always, then I recommend this trilogy. Um, yeah, The War of the Lost Hearts, volume one. Start with this one. Do you actually see how big book three is here? She is thick. Oh my gosh. It is over 700 pages. So yeah, my beach read for the next time I'm at a beach. This one. Okay, this next one is a book that I have talked about quite a lot on my channel recently, and that would be House of Beating Wings by Olivia Wildenstein. I have read book two, which is House of Pounding Hearts. I need to buy book three. It is on my agenda to catch up with the rest of the series, but this is really good. It's also kind of, I don't want to say it's slower paced because I don't want that phrase to put you off, but like, I think what I mean by that is it gives you all of the information and details like of the situation and the world and allows for relationships to develop and unfold quite naturally. I think that's a better way of putting it. It's not like rushed. It's not like insta love by any means. And yeah, okay, that's what I mean by that. So anyway, so this is about a girl who is basically at the bottom of a caste system, but her best friend is actually the prince. And Prince Dante loves her. She loves him. And when an oracle predicts that she will be queen, she is on a mission to make that come true. So the story unfolds <laughs> from there, so to say. Um, there's something very unique about this book that I have not come across before, however, it would be a spoiler, so I cannot say. But if you like a Venetian inspired fantasy world, this is one for you. If you like a unique kind of fae, is the best way to put it, this is one for you. Um, yeah, Betrayal, Heartbreak, it's good. It's another one to sink your teeth into. So yeah, pick up both of them, sit at the beach, Drink your drink, drink your iced coffee, dive into it. Okay, this is another one of my recent favorite series that I am dying to complete. And that would be Trial of the Sun Queen, followed by Rule of the Aurora King. So, 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 so good. This is like Akatar, but like make it more adult. Okay, it's the best kind of description I have for this book. Um, it's about a girl named Laura. She is a slave. She's tortured. She is left for death. She ends up being freed and put in these trials to become the bride and wife of the Sun King. And she doesn't understand why because she's really not meant to be there. Um, yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna leave it there. Have I given you enough to entice you? I like this book because it it has very good writing. It kept me on my seat and it's one of those ones where by the time you get to book two, circumstances and settings have changed and you're just like, oh my gosh, there's all this other stuff going on. So yeah, you need to check this out. This is a recent read of mine that I've not actually reviewed yet on my channel. So you're getting a little piece of that here. And that would be A Kiss of Iron by Claire Sager. She's thick, boys and girls. She's a floppy thick book. I read her in about a week, but she is 600 pages long. Um, uh, maybe a little bit too long at times, only because there are a number of spicy scenes. And I was like, is it too many spicy scenes? Maybe up to you to decide. But this is part of like a broader world of books by Claire Sager. However, um, I like started here. I think that maybe I resent reading this one first just because there's a whole other pirate series 
by her, which actually might be a better book recommendation. So I'm going to pop those up on this on the screen here now. Um, that's like a pirate fantasy romance. And it follows the sister of the main protagonist cat in this book. So I don't really know what to tell you. What a bad booktuber I am. What a bad book recommendation video this is. Maybe you and I together can read these pirate books because it's more like on brand with Summer. But I liked this one because it is long. Um, it's so much fun. It's very steamy. It's about this girl who is on the verge of losing everything. Her husband is a piece of shit and she has an opportunity now to go to the castle and like make herself into a normal woman once again. She meets a, a man whose name is Bashan Marwood and the story goes from there. Um, yeah. Okay. Pirate romance series that we both need to read or this one? Take your pick. This next one I'm not going to go on about forever because there is no need. It's pretty self-explanatory. However, I've never actually recommended it for specific prompts before. I've always just been like, hello, read it. Um, and that would be the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. I specifically pulled Empire of Storms because I think that once you get to the end of this series, when the books are thicker and like the story is so intense and you have so many point of views going on and you're just like, oh my God, everything's happening. You cannot stop flipping the page. That's when it's like really good. So Empire of Storms, I mean, I have them all down here. Like these last three books, Beach Reads, Beach Reads. Girl, grab your drinks, an iced coffee, a pina colada, grab a pizza, sit on the beach and just read. If you have read Throne of Glass, do you agree with me? Would you consider this a beach read? Would you consider it like a cuddly in bed read? Would you consider it like an airplane read? Would you consider it just like an everywhere read? I don't know about you, but I could not stop reading these and binging these. And yeah, that's all I have to say about these books. I have a quartet for you to sink your teeth into now. It's YA. It's a little bit different from what I recommended before. It's a classic fantasy series that I don't think is talked about very much anymore. And that would be An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. I whipped out here my whole US <laughs> collection. Hello. To show you. This is a Rome, ancient Roman inspired fantasy world but mesh that with like gin and genie and ghouls and deserts and uh almost like an arabian ancient rome mix if that makes sense there's also a gladiator kind of presence um very very vicious world with training academies for children to become a part of armies and it's just so well done. Saba Tahir did a great job. It's one that I also took my time reading and enjoying, but did read them back to back. So I did read them over a span of a few months, but very, very, very good. This was a book that I started when I first started booktube here a couple years ago. So kind of nostalgic for me. I would read it again and I would read it at a beach. My last recommendation is actually one that I haven't finished yet, but it's telling me that this would be a beach read. If I found myself on the shores of Bali or Florida tomorrow, this book would be with me because it's long, it's complex, it's fantasy romance, it's adult, it's dark, it's dangerous, it's something that I just would become engrossed in. And that would be Amber V. Nicole's Gods and Monsters series. I just purchased book two. This is book one, Book of Azrael. And then the, Thr the Throne of Broken Gods is book two. I think book three is on its way. Okay, it's not, the title is not in the back of the second book yet, but I think she announced it on Instagram. I've talked about this book twice already on my channel and I still don't know what is going on really. <laughs> Again, why 
am I doing a recommendation video when I can't tell you what this book is about? But let me try my best. Okay, it's about this girl named D Diana, and she is forced into servitude with this horrible man named Caden. And she has to hunt down an ancient relic held by her most dangerous enemies, an army held by Sam Keel, the world ender. Okay, Sam Keel hid from everything, he comes back. However, with the world at stake, Dan Diana and Sam Keel have to like come together and be on the same side before everything is lost. It's really interesting because it's set in our world because there's like a it's, there's an urban fantasy aspect of it because earth exists but then there are other worlds and then there are realms and there's only one map of Onuna and I don't know if like these are worlds or these are countries I think they're like countries and lands within this world but then the human world is outside of here I don't know if you've read this book Tell me what's going on because I like it and I feel like we're just getting into it. I'm like 120 pages in or something. Um, and then, you know, when I'm at the beach, I can pick up this thick brick of a book. So there you have it. Those are my beach fantasy romance recommendations for you. Let me know down below what you would read at the beach. Would it be something like what I like to read? Would it be something totally different? I am curious. I feel like you have to be in the right mood. I don't know. I feel like your mood kind of like determines what kind of book you want to read. Actually, the last time I was at a beach, I actually read Lovely War. And that is a historical fiction fantasy book told through like Aphrodite and who was it? Ares maybe? Very cool, very cool. Very different than the books I recommended to you now, but I was just like feeling some type of way <laughs> the day I was reading that book. So um, not my usual beach read, but do let me know what you would pick up. If there's anything that I should pick up if I happen to find myself on a beach. Probably won't happen this year, but a girl can dream. <laughs> if you made it to the end of this video, why don't you drop a palm tree emoji down below so I can thank you in the comments and we can chat more and I will see you in another video super soon. Bye.